So maybe you're like me and you have a bunch of Infinity 4.5 files just lying around begging to be rendered out. And you think, well I got this garage full of old Macs, if only I could network them together and use them as some sort of render farm to render out all these old files. Well I got some good news. I got a personal message over Reddit a couple months ago that went like this. Well, I don't quite know why, but I saw your comment on our vintage CGI, and I spent the better part of last week reverse engineering the serial number algorithm for Infinity 4.5. It was a nostalgia trip for me, and hopefully you can get some nice renders out of it. Here are a few serial numbers. What followed was a roll of about 18 unique serial numbers, apparently, for the Infinity 4.5 network license. Now, it looks like I wasn't the only person that was contacted, but I pressed this mysterious stranger for more information, and what they told me was pretty interesting. Now, I'll make a document that has all the information I collected from this mysterious online person who gave me the serial numbers, but they also found out some quirks about how the Infinity Network render engine works, and I'll try and list them here briefly. Now, to make all this work, you're gonna obviously need two Mac OS 9 capable Macs. The first one, we'll call your main machine, needs to have a full copy of Infinity 4.5 installed, and you need both an application serial number and a network serial number. Now you can find both of those at the link in the description for the MacintoshGarden.org. Now for all of the worker machines, you need to install Infinity 4.5, but you don't need to install the whole thing. You just need the network render engine and the engine control panel. Now you'd think that with all that put together, you'd be ready to go but you'll run into a problem, and this is because of something that isn't documented in any of the Infinity 4.5 manuals for the network render engine. The friendly stranger discovered that in order to get this all to work, you have to move the Infinity 4.5 engine file out of the network rendering software folder and move it into the same folder as the Infinity 4.5 resources.rsr file. I mean, who knows why? That's just one of the quirks of this whole setup. It's wild to think that it wasn't included in any of the documentation. The friendly stranger posits it could be a problem with the installer that is on the Macintosh Garden. So if you have a legitimate CD copy of Infinity 4.5, please do us a favor, upload it to the Macintosh Garden, and maybe that'll clear all this up. So how did our friendly stranger go about doing this? Well, I asked them for a little background information and they were happy to oblige. They sent me these pretty sweet videos too, so you can see what the process looks like. I'm sort of paraphrasing what they told me, so do keep in mind I'm a layman. If I get something wrong, I apologize. I'll try to keep the original text from the reverse engineer in the document I'm linking. They started by setting up an Ubuntu virtual machine. From within that, they emulated a macOS environment using Kemu, using Maxbug, an old debugger program. They then poked and prodded the application to try and find the location in memory where the serial number check algorithm lived. Now they told me that this is quite difficult because Infinity has over 14,000 subroutines, each having dozens or hundreds of instructions. By providing an incorrect serial number and seeing where in memory the bad serial number dialog box came from, they can get a good idea of where the subroutine for the serial number check algorithm is. But even when they do, it's all just a bunch of compiled code in memory, which is where Interactive Disassembler comes in. Using IDA, our friendly stranger reverse engineer was able to get an overview of the code and continue to zero in on that serial number check routine. Once a viable candidate has been found for what might be the serial number check algorithm, they have to go through it instruction by instruction. And our friendly stranger used both IDA and Maxbugs in concert to see the memory and the disassembly at the same time. They also use IDA's decompiler, which creates C-like pseudocode based on the disassembly. Now, it's not exactly like the source code, but it's human readable to the point where our friendly stranger was able to start to piece together what each part of the algorithm did, getting us closer and closer to how the serial number is actually evaluated and confirmed as a working, legitimate serial number. By doing this, they also found out that Infinity has support for the YARC architecture? 
And with that information in hand, all that was left was to create a program that generated legitimate serial numbers using that information, which, as most of us who have pirated software are familiar with, is called a keygen. So there you have it, a mostly high-level, probably inaccurate, layman's explanation of how our friendly stranger did. So great, congratulations me. I now finally have a network render serial number for this program, something I've been trying to get for maybe 20 years or so. So what the hell am I gonna do with it? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have set up my own little render farm here at home and I'm going back through my catalog of old files and doing the best I can to re-render them. But you know, I thought of something else that might be kind of fun for us retro computer Mac addicts. Up on the Macintosh garden, somebody's uploaded a collection of old Infinity files. It's a real grab bag of old 3D files, and in there is one called Bar Scene. So what I've done is I've rendered out this standard file with my render farm. And here's how long my render farm took to complete it. Can you and your collection do any better? Let me know. I'm happy to report that our mysterious reverse engineer tells me that they're not stopping here either. They've got a whole team together and they're gonna keep reverse engineering serial numbers for all sorts of obsolete programs just like this. So hey, this one goes out to all of you out there working hard to keep these programs running on our old machines. Without you, the retro scene wouldn't be what it is, so thank you. And hey, special thanks to our mysterious reverse engineer. If you're out there watching this, this is all because of you, buddy. Thank you. But that about does it for me, I think. I got a lot of work to do, a lot of things to render. So if you're looking for me, I'll be down on the farm. So long. Oh my gosh, Mac OS 9 at 1080p. It's so crisp. It's so crisp!